Hi everybody, how are you? This is Leslie from Leslie's Creative Studio and I am doing a voiceover on this project because once again my microphone did not work and I'm not going to refilm this. <laughs> anyway, this is my Muse video for my creative year for February 2019 and my Muse is currently telling me to work with some watercolor and I thought the best way to do that is to work with some watercolor pencils that I will get out here in just a moment. Ah, oh, yes, here they come. Yes, the Ink Tense, Der the Derwent Ink Tense uh, watercolor pencils. They were gifted to me by uh, Peg Robinson from Peg's Bits and Pieces. These are a set of 24 and they are absolutely wonderful. The colors in this set are just perfect for what I want to do. And they help me get used to watercolors so that I can be more successful when I'm using my watercolors. Um, I also have three different size water brushes here that I'm going to use. And um, this one here has a smaller brush. And this one is a little bit larger or medium brush. I'm trying to open that one without spilling it. And that's my big brush. So anyway, all my um, all the things that I use on this project will be listed in the description below. But those are the three different brushes that I'll um, be using on this project. And this is just watercolor paper from Canton. And I believe it's 140 um, pound. Uh, watercolor paper. So the first thing I'm going to do is get a pencil out. Yes, I can see my hands are moving, but okay. Yep. Yep. Here it comes. I think it's an orange one. Come on now. There it is. Yes. I'm going to be using, um, that would end up being too dark. I'm going to be using orange and yellow. And right now I'm just kind of sketching out an area that I'm going to fill in. And the good thing about using these um, watercolor pencils from Inktense is that you don't need to fill in the whole thing. You just need to sketch over it lightly with your um, watercolor pencil. And then when you take your water brush to it, it really um, fills everything else in. And the one thing I like about this is that I can go lightly over this with the orange and then I can go back in with the yellow and it fills everything in beautifully. I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer here so you can see what I'm doing. Um, the lighting I have is not the best. I, not the best. I apologize for the shadows. But my husband's not working right now, and getting better lighting is kind of on the bottom of our um, priority list of things to be purchasing. So here I am um, telling you that I'm just going to go ahead and fill this in and not bore you. And as you can see, there's a, a line there. But when I use my water brush to... Uh, to blend everything. You'll see that that line will eventually go away. Yeah, that line will go away when I when I get my water brushes going there. And I do keep also paper towels handy. And that's just a piece of toilet paper that I keep on a rag. And that will, um, I use that to clean off my brush as I'm um, cleaning, or maybe sometimes it's too orange or too wet, I can use that. And then, of course, I do use my heat gun to dry as I go along. And I just, as you can see, I just get my water brush slightly wet. You can push on that area right there, and it'll, it'll get, your, um, get your water going. Um, I don't continuously um, push on the to release the water I just get my brush wet um, and start blending and um, adding more water to the brush um, bristles as needed they will dry out and I just start getting everything wet and then blending things together 
and I can dry with my heat gun and then um, add more color in areas as needed. I think that's one of my favorite parts actually is um, blending all of the colors together. Um, this particular project, um, the piece of it that I'm using, I actually um, used part of it in um, a challenge video that I did um, for February over at my creative year. Um, and the only way that you can see that challenge video and take part in the challenge is if you're part of the My Creative Year Facebook group. I will make sure that there's a link to that below in the description as well. Um, it's a great group. It's a year-long um, teaching, pro teaching um, project class that we do. There's a, I can't remember how many teachers we have right now. I think we have six that are, um, and we're, you know, I don't know where else you can find a free teaching class in mixed media art for free and have six different teachers, six different styles. Um, as you can see, I'm going different directions here. I'm going both up and down and sideways and it adds wonderful texture and, um, lines to, uh, to my piece here. I end up only using part of it, um, but I just wanted to be able to show you how well that how well that covers using very very little of the um, of the pencil. And look at that color; it's just magnificent. And here I'm just kind of working on trying to get that line to um, blend in with everything else. And if it gets a little too wet, just roll over with some paper towels to uh, sop up some of that water. And as you can see, that line is disappearing that was in the middle there. But I do love the way the color moves on this um, particular brand of paper and using this particular brand of watercolor pencils. You could probably, um, if you're just starting out, um, you may want to try um, using even a Crayola watercolor pencil. I don't think you're going to get as good of coverage as this, but to just, to, but just to start, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to use that just to kind of see how you like it. For me, I'm finding that I absolutely love this and I have gone out and purchased some more um, actual watercolor pans that I'm going to be playing with. As I said, my muse this month seems to be watercolor. So I thought what better way to start playing with that muse than use the, wa the watercolor pencils and um, just to see how everything works and moves with the water and the color and how things blend. Okay, now that my watercolor piece here is all dry, I'm going to go ahead and put my homemade um, stamping foam block thing <laughs> underneath it. And I'm going to get out my stamping block and I'm going to get out a stamp from Gina's um, set 13, which I think is called Wildflowers. I'm going to get that on my stamping block and I'm going to get out my Stazon ink. And I'm going to, uh, I believe that's in jet black, by the way. And I am going to stamp up, ink up my stamp. And what I'm also going to do um, is I'm going to stamp it off on a scrap piece of paper after I get it all inked up, just to make sure there's no... Um, 
nothing fuzzy on there or anything that's going to get in the way. So it looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and re-ink that, that stamp up. And by the way, have I told you that that's like, that stays on black, jet black ink is like my favorite. Yeah, it's a permanent, permanent ink and it does a really good job. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stamp my image on here. There we go. Come on, stamp on. There you go. So I'm just going to hold that down real for a second just to make sure that soaks into the ink. Getting a good lift. Look at that. Turned out perfect. Not a smudge on it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come back in with my yellow pencil and I thought yeah I better move that out of the way I'm going to dry my ink up real quick just to make sure that it's set before I start using that that yellow pencil on there and it just takes a real quick heat set to get that um, that ink dry And now I'm going to come back in with my yellow pencil and I'm just going to add some more yellow color to my leaves to make them a little bit brighter. That yellow behind is going to go away. So I really want those um, petals to be yellow. And I will come back in with a, um, a black fine tip pen to redefine um, some of the uh, doodle within the petals. There we go. Now I'm just going to use one of the uh, smaller, the medium water pen and wet that up. It's very difficult to see much difference, but I promise there is a difference um, between what's on the petals and the background behind it. And I will try and lift that up when I'm done there so that you can see the difference. I'm just going back over it now just to make sure I didn't miss any spots. I didn't want it to look blotchy at all. Just to make sure that that, that has spread out. I don't know if you can tell, but see it is a little bit more yellow than the surrounding area. With the background. Okay, now that I've dried that, I'm going to go ahead and take a red um, from my um, Inktense watercolor pencils, and I'm just going to fill in that center real good. And then I should come in with the water brush. Yep, there it is. And just wet that so that it's nice and smooth. And then I'll heat that up with the heat gun again, just to get that dry. All right, now I'm coming in with a blue pencil and I'm going to outline all the way around my flower. And that's gonna add um, a really great background, and especially when I start to get it wet. 
um, there you go. I went ahead and um, paused the video while I finished that so you didn't have to watch me do that whole thing. But when I add the water to that, that's just going to spread out. And it's just really, really cool. And I'm using my medium-sized brush on that. Um, and the great thing is, too, is because blue and yellow make green. So I have the blue. And then as I pull that blue color out, it gets green. And in the end, you're going to see I'm going to pull that out a little bit more so that the blue really defines close to the flower and then it becomes like a really light green. And so it's a really nice transition then with the yellow behind it. It just looks really, really cool. So I'll let you watch my process here as I just pull all that paint out and shade all the way around my flower. And yes, I know I'm being very precise here. Um, I'm not always very precise in, in what I do with my mixed media art, but sometimes being precise and just kind of taking my time and, and just enjoy what I'm doing here is I'm really just enjoying the process and there's nothing wrong with, um, taking your time. There's no rush. Um, so for me, it's not a matter of being meticulous about it. It's just, I was enjoying it. Now you can see the little sprays that come out on the end there that they're green. I'm taking a purple pencil right now and I'm going around the red center of the um, flower because, you know, if you have red, why not add a little purple to it as well? And then what I'll do is I'll take my um, water pen again and I'm going to wet that um, I wet those centers and just pull them out into the petals. And now what I'm going to do is I'm taking a white Posca pen and that is a fine tip Posca pen. I am going to keep that there because I will have to continually clean off my nib because the watercolor will come off on it. So I try and get as much done as I can before I have to clean off that, that nib, but it, it just adds, um, just adds a little something, something to that flower. I just really love the way it highlights it and makes it um, stand out from the uh, background. And as I said, this is just, uh, I'm just enjoying this process. I'm just taking my time. Um, I have some music playing in the background. Um, as I do this. So I'm just really enjoying, you know, my, my uh, evening as I just work on this and, and relax. It's, uh, it's a great way for me to unwind. Um, I think everybody needs a way to unwind once in a while. Here I'm trying to dot some area on there and I end up smudging it, but I'm going to come back later and fix it. It doesn't look too bad, but that just goes to show you that, you know, um, there's a saying that says, you know, if it's perfect, it's not art. I agree with that. I'm not looking for perfection here. I'm thinking this is really turning out pretty doggone cool. As I said, you can see I, I go around it a couple of times because that white really melts in with the blue or mixes with the blue, I should say. I'll give that a quick heat set with my heat gun. And there I am trying to fix that area there that I smudged the, uh, the white paint. And I take a real thin brush and just uh, 
smooth that back out a little bit. Try and pick up some of the paint, the excess paint there. Voila. I'm thinking that's looking pretty good. I like how you can use paper towels just to pick up your excess paint. And once again, I'm just going to give that a heat set. I find if I heat set in between applications of things, it makes life a little bit easier. And again, now what I'm going to do is just take my generic um, Sharpie. It's a dual tip, one end thick. And the other end has a, uh, a small nib on it, a fine tip. And I'm just going to uh, kind of bring back in the black of um, the petals to kind of define them again a little bit more and kind of add a whimsical feel to them. Because that's the one thing I love about the stamp of Gina's. It's kind of a whimsical flower. And it's just cute. Honestly, it's just cute. I'll make sure that there's a link to Gina's Etsy shop in the description below and you can pick up her stamps. She has a ton of stamps and she has um, new releases coming out throughout the year this year. Um, Atomic Age is uh, one of the sets she's doing. I can't wait for my um, my design team set to come to me so I can play with it. I hate trying to remember to stay in frame because when I'm drawn in that that close it's, it's very easy to get out of frame but there you go you can get the idea. Now once again I'm coming back in with that white Posca pen and again that's the fine tip Posca pen just want to make sure everything is just right so I don't leave any blobs on my on my work. I'd hate to do all that work and have a huge blob of paint on it. As well as the paint all over my hands, as you can see. And yes, once again, I'm just going to go back over the, uh, the petals. Because after putting the black um, black marker in there, uh, I feel like I lost some of the definition of the white. I'm just cleaning my nib off again. I could have sealed it beforehand, but you, know, you don't have to. Just clean your nib off. And again, this started out with just a simple flower stamp. Threw down some colored pencil and just started to play. And now, as it's and starting to come to the end of the process here, I have a beautiful flower that I can use as an embellishment um, on a page or, you know, to put as part of a pocket or whatever. It's a, uh, they're just really um, a lot of fun to, uh, to do. You know, or just do it for your own pleasure. Um, what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. So I don't need it on all of that big piece of paper there. trying to even it up a little bit so it's not too uneven round the corners here I'm not real good at rounding corners by hand but that's all right I think when you see the picture at the end what I and on the thumbnail 
I go back and make it more of a circle than a, a square. Just trying to even up all the edges on that. And who knows, you know, when I go back and use that as an embellishment, I may pull all that yellow off. Who knows? But at least I have it there and it's it's ready for me to use. And get rid of my scraps there. And then you see me try and ink it with the lid. Yeah, that's not going to work. How about we use the ink pad? <laughs> you tell I'm tired and it's Friday. There we go. So I go ahead and ink my edges. It kind of gives it a nice final touch, a finished look to it. And I'm working hard to make sure I don't get my fingers in that blank ink and end up with black ink smudged all over um, my piece of work. And there it is. It's all done and all ready to be used. And I hope you enjoyed my video here. And uh, I hope you enjoyed my process. I really enjoyed doing this and um, I hope that it inspires you to do something creative and um, whether it be for a journal or just for pure sake of um, just to be creative and relax. And so I guess what I'm going to say now is, as I always say at the end of all my videos, especially um, with the way things are right now, please remember be nice. It's really not that difficult and enjoy your weekend and take some time to make something creative. It's, um, to me, I find it just to be so relaxing. Give it a try. Try your watercolor pencils out to see how you like them. And, uh, yeah. Yes, so that does it pretty much for me for the month of February for my creative year. This is my Muse video. And I really hope you like it. So everyone have a great weekend and thank you so very much. And remember to be nice. Thanks everybody.